Hello and welcome back to another Portworks Lightboard session. Today we're going to be talking about data protection, uh, different buckets of what we mean by that. So when we're talking about data protection, it can mean a lot of things. What we're going to cover today is local HA, and we'll get into about what these mean individually, uh, disaster recovery, and backup and restore. So the difference between these is depending on the perspective of where you're looking to protect the application and what the plan is for recovering that application or individual piece of that application. So for local HA, so local high availability, you would have an application That application would be sitting on some level of infrastructure. So in this case, it's Kubernetes, and that Kubernetes has a persistent volume claim for that application. And of course, there are a number of different nodes underneath here. Let's say that they're just x86. So local high availability means that the data itself is replicated across nodes such that the volume has a copy on other nodes, meaning that uh, if the disk fails at this level, there are other copies of that data available so that you can make your application highly available. The other option is if the app or node fails, there's other nodes for the application to start and access the data. So it could just be rescheduled by Kubernetes. And as long as it can talk to a copy of its data, that application is highly available. So in this case, local high availability is really approached by the orchestration layer and the data management layer. In terms of the data management layer, we need replication of the individual volumes uh, and blocks of that volume. So that's where you know Portworks um, has always been really good at providing local high availability and uh, failover protection for Kubernetes applications by providing replication across the cluster. The second bit of this is disaster recovery. So this is more in the sense where you have, say you have a cluster, again, running Kubernetes, and you have a number of different applications. And those applications have volumes. Now for disaster recovery, there's typically a primary site. So we'll call this the primary and there is a secondary. Uh, secondary is more generic, so it can be sort of an active, active, secondary or a standby secondary. So again, you have a whole nother cluster over here, basically waiting as an active or standby um, cluster ready for disaster to strike at the kind of cluster or data center layer in, from the primary. So what's crucial here is that uh, the disaster recovery mechanism can really tie these two together in terms of a pairing. Uh, it, it also, in certain cases, needs to be able to replicate data. So if you were to want to have a zero recovery point object, then uh, 
um, you'd have to be synchronizing data across these clusters such that uh, if a disaster happens, then uh, the data is already available and ready to go and you can just turn on the applications. So that brings me to the applications is you need the application uh, metadata or resources. In this case for Kubernetes, it's all the YAML that defines the configuration of the application. And this needs to be replicated as well. So what happens is if this whole data center goes down, then automatically these get turned on, the data is already there, and the applications basically have an RTO that's as fast as the scheduler can turn on those applications in the uh, other application uh, site. So this is kind of the synchronous model we're talking about. There is a asynchronous model where it's more of a timed mechanism. So it's, you know, replicate my data asynchronously every 10 minutes, half hour, day, hour, whatever it may be. And that's really just a DR scenario that uh, is more backup based, um, but it still pulls the data and applications such that you can turn it on quickly so your RTO is low, but your RPO is gonna have some, some data loss. Thirdly, in terms of the data protection buckets that we're talking about here, we've covered local HA and DR is backup and recovery. So again, you would have a Kubernetes cluster, uh, some application or applications running on that cluster, some persistent state, and a backup is typically somewhere off-site, whether that's in a different failure domain on-prem or in a, a, a cloud-based object storage. The key here is that the backup that needs to be taken uh, includes the data and volume, right? So this is the YAML and this is the data. And together, they become kind of an application aware backup in the sense that we're not just backing up the node in terms of a VM, uh, or we're not just backing up kind of the entire etcd database uh, for Kubernetes, but we're targeting specific applications within Kubernetes namespaces. Uh, and that includes YAML defining resources and persistent state. Now, there is the ability to really focus in on a single application, but also broad enough where you can say, go ahead and back up uh, an entire namespace. So this could be defined at the namespace level. But in either case, this should be sent somewhere offsite to cloud object storage, and that can be backed up to, uh, uh, you know, give you the ability to restore to the same cluster in case you're just backing up for kind of compliance or on a regular basis, uh, or in the case that you have you know, issues with the uh, cluster that you're running backups from, you can restore to a whole different Kubernetes cluster. And again, that's the backup and restore. So to recap, data protection buckets, we're really talking about what different perspectives you need protection at in terms of high availability at the local kind of availability zone or single cluster uh, or across availability zones. Then there's a disaster recovery where uh, a natural disaster or a security issue renders an entire you know, data center app or our site uh, unable to be used. So you need to turn on a active or standby site that can really get things going quickly or to kind of have a regular backup uh, uh, protection scheme where you're doing this sort of compliance or uh, regulation and need to restore uh, to certain points in time. So hopefully this gives you a sense of the different data protection uh, opportunities and configurations you have with Portworks. Uh, and definitely go take a look at PXDR, uh, PX Backup, and obviously PX Store, which um, hopefully you've tried already. Uh, but then again, if you haven't, go ahead and try out PX Essentials as well. This gives you kind of a free uh, view of the local high availability uh, and PXDR and backup. You'll have to read about or try PX Enterprise. Okay, until next time, take care.